Hello, my name is Sarah Shelton, and for my Info Sources and Services class, I will be talking about avoiding plagiarism today. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. And as you can see, this sentence is not plagiarized because it is cited by Oxford Languages. Some examples of plagiarism. One example of plagiarism is copying another student's work. This will happen a lot in elementary school, middle school, high school, when students forget to do their homework. I would see this all the time in high school. Instead of directly copying another student's work, if there is time in the morning, maybe they can help you through it, or you guys can work on it together if you've both forgotten, but copying another student's work directly is plagiarism, which can result in expulsion, suspension, um, you can also copy another student's work by taking their essay, copying, pasting it, and just editing it a little bit. Another example is paraphrasing a source too closely. When you are quoting information, especially from a book or online, a lot of people just take what is said and kind of change some words a little bit around. But you actually want to directly put it in your own words or even cite that you've got this information from said book or uh, website. Another example is not crediting a source, which can include information, images, and more. You want to credit every single thing you put into your assignments. As you can see here on the slide, I took this image from Icon Experience and in the bottom left corner, I made sure to include that to give them their credit. If you paraphrase something, you wanna put that in the end of your assignment, whether you have a bibliography or a reference sheet. If you paraphrase as well, you should say where the information is from. And lastly, one example I have is using a direct quote without quotation marks. And quotation marks, as you can see, I put in quotation marks. Every single time you use a direct quote, you want to put it in quotation marks so that the reader knows where this information is from. The wording is exactly the same as where you got this information and that it is not your wording. Here is an example of plagiarism I quickly wrote up. At TWU, and you can see here that something is messed up because it says at TWU, Texas Women Offers, so you said Texas Women's twice basically. But at TWU, Texas Women offers degree programs in the liberal arts and sciences, nursing, health sciences, business, and education. Do you see what's wrong here? This is a factual statement, and you may know this off the top of your head if you are a student, but did this exact wording come from somewhere? It should say... The TWU website under about states Texas women's offer degree, of pro de degree programs in the liberal arts and sciences, nursing, health sciences, business, and education. And then there's my in-text citation that's from Texas Women's University with my period at the end. I do go a little overboard by saying exactly where I got it, where I say the TWU website under about but it's better to be safe than sorry. Using a sentence like that actually shows the reader where they could find this information, where exactly you got this information, 
And I also noted here that all citations will look a little different based on the style you are using. I am personally taking two classes right now where one is Chicago manual style and one is APA 7 style. So when I'm doing assignments, I know I get a bit confused with the in-text citations because they are pretty different. Here I used APA where the period goes outside the parentheses rather than inside the quote marks. Um, it'll look a little different if you're using a different style such as Chicago manual style. So if, you're, if your assignments don't look like that, do not worry. There are mainly four common types of plagiarism. The first one is direct. Direct plagiarism describes a situation in which someone takes the work of another word for word and portrays it as his or own work. This happens a lot when people forget to cite and forget to put quotation marks. Self-plagiarism. Self-plagiarism plagiarism occurs when a student submits his or her own previous work or mixes parts of previous works without permission from without permission from all professors involved. I know personally when I was in undergraduate school, I was a journalism major and I would be taking five to six classes at a time and sometimes those classes really coincided where we'd have very similar assignments. I also worked for the student newspaper and magazine, so sometimes I'd be writing similar stories as to the ones I was covering for class. And it becomes very hard not to use the same wording that you used in your other class. But that is plagiarism because you submitted it to your other class for a grade. So you really have to just sit there and write something different, put it in different wording, find different information to go with each assignment. A lot of students do not know that you cannot submit something twice, especially in two separate classes, unless you get both professors permission. You could say, you know I'm doing this exact assignment in a different class if the assignment is really like that similar, but you still have to get their permission. Another common type of plagiarism is mosaic. Mosaic plagiarism occurs when a student borrows phrases from a source without using quotation marks or finds synonyms for the author's language while keeping the same general structure and meaning of the original. While, of course, you want to look for synonyms from the author's language to convey your point if you really cannot think of ways to word it, in your, word it yourself, you do not want to keep the same general structure. You really want to sit there and think about how to put this in your own words, if you were going to describe it to someone else without using the quote you are taking, and you still want to say where that information came from. The last common type of plagiarism is accidental or unintentional plagiarism. This refers to instances where a failure to properly attribute sources is a result of a writer's simple mistake or a failure to properly understand particular academic norms. Like I was just saying before, when you are in different classes with different citation styles, it does get confusing and you could plagiarize by misquoting or citing incorrectly and that would be accidental plagiarism. Um, you can also just, I know personally I am very bad at reference sheets and in-text citations, remembering them all correctly. So I'm terrified of accidental plagiarism myself. Um, yeah, forgetting to put in a quotation mark, forgetting to site where you got the information is all accidental plagiarism. Basically anything you do by accident. 
what is simple plagiarism? Simple plagiarism is basically the same thing as plagiarism, but I know a lot of people refer to simple plagiarism as this one specific thing, so I wanted to include it. So if someone says simple plagiarism, you know what they are talking about. Simple plagiarism is presenting work or ideas from another source as your own with or without consent of the original author by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. Even if you have their consent, you want to say whose idea that was or whose words that was. This type of plagiarism typically occurs when someone steals ideas. Just because it isn't written online or published doesn't mean it isn't stealing. I know when I was in classes with my friends and we had to come up with topics for our stories, if someone shares an idea that they are going to do, you do not want to do that same idea because you did not come up with it. That's more simple and easy to kind of get away with because if they end up not doing that topic you could probably do that topic but this is referring to more someone comes up with an idea let's say a way you're writing a story on a way to feed your dogs easier like I'm personally thinking of the slow feeding bowl let's say someone came up with the idea of the slow feeding bowl you should not go and then write a paper on the slow feeding bowl without saying this is actually the person who came up with it. I actually don't know who invented that, but you don't want to steal their work. Some ways to avoid plagiarism. Quotation marks. You always want to use quotation marks over someone's direct words. My personal tip is Always include the author's name in the same sentence as a quote. Just like in my example, I said the TWU website states. If you are quoting someone directly, like if you are quoting me, you want to say, use the quotation marks, and then at the end you could put said Sarah Shelton, or at the beginning you could say Sarah Shelton said, and then use the quotation marks. Remembering to cite correctly. My big tip is the citation generator. You can just Google citation generator and a lot of free generators will come up. A lot of them you just have to watch a daily ad to be able to access it. But you just go in that citation generator, you click what style you're using, you input all the information and it'll create a citation for you and you can copy and paste it into your work. plagiarism generator. I personally do not use a plagiarism generator, but I heard they are very helpful from friends. Um, I am assuming you just paste in your paper and it'll search the internet for direct quotes or very close paraphrasing and it'll show you, hey, you got this from this website or this website follows us really closely. Did you get it from here? And you have the chance to cite it correctly before turning in your work. Reference or bibliography sheet. This is typically at the end of all your assignments. And, and then it's not there if you didn't quote anything, but my tip for that is make it as you work. As I was putting together this PowerPoint on plagiarism, every single time I used an image, quoted a website, I immediately went to my citation generator, put it in, copied and pasted it at the end of my PowerPoint. Then I went back and put them in the correct order. So I made it as I worked to make sure I didn't forget to cite anything. One big thing is you don't want to change someone's direct quotes unless you are just paraphrasing them. Um, so when shortening quotes, you want to use ellipses. This is when you have a really long quote and you cut out part of it you want to show that there was more words said in between or you want to show that you cut the quote off early and that the person said more this is just I would I would say that'd be misquoting someone which is technically plagiarism 
if you didn't do that. That's, I'm a journalist, so that's something that's important to me, but I would say that doesn't come up a lot in the type of work we do in library science. Proofreading. Proofreading is super important. My biggest tip is when you are proofreading, think about all the facts in your paper. Every time you come across a fact, think, how did I know that? Did I read it somewhere? Did someone tell me that? There has to be a reason you knew that fact or information. Unless you're writing an opinion piece, think about where you got that and state where you got that information. And then here is my reference sheet of all the places I got my information on plagiarism, the images I used, and more.